Hello, my name is Megatron Bison, and welcome back to this let's play of Resident Evil on the PlayStation. We're playing Chris's game, and this is part three. So now we've returned to the mansion, and much like Chill before him, Chris is going to have to explore the remaining rooms. Now we have the helmet key, we're able to explore some of those. And get over to the remaining part of the western wing of the mansion. As established before, this here place is now going to be absolutely crawling with the hunters, which is just shit. I mean, I can't say anything good about that for Chris, because he doesn't have a bazooka. So it's going to take at least three shots to kill the hunter. And as I'll be showing during this let's play here, I get kicked about by hunters quite a bit if I've only got a shotgun. A bazooka can take them out in a single round usually, it's rare when it doesn't, but the shotgun it's at least three blasts and sometimes they won't have a recovery animation, or sometimes they will and it can be awkward to judge when you can actually hit them again before they will jump towards you and get a quick hit in on you. Anyway, Yawn once again has come out and this time we're going to have to fight him in Chris's game. He appears to be damaged, even though I hadn't actually fought him the first time round, I nearly ran away. But he's not that tough, as I showed in Jill's game when I accidentally used the shotgun. Yon goes down very quickly from the shotgun. I get, he gets a couple of bites in on me, but that's why I brought that healing spray with me. And we drop down here without the luxury of a rope in Chris's game, so there's no way to retrace our steps. But we move this tombstone again and enter this basement area of the mansion. And yes, we're going to descend that ladder. And over here we've got some shotgun ammo, as well as one of the classic green zombies. He goes down incredibly quickly, of course, with the shotgun. And like I said, once you've got this here and you've got sufficient ammo, there's really no reason to carry the um, handgun with you anymore, even as Chris. It's chill, you can get rid of it even quicker, because you can get the shotgun much quicker in her game, as well as the bazooka. There's some munchy zombies over here. I'm going to try and get two in one. No, it wasn't that satisfying. That felt brilliant. I decide to pick up a green herb in case of hunters. And I'm probably going to be going up against hunters, so... Best to stay on full health. We unlock this door from the other side into the kitchen. And that little shining object over here is the small key. So, as you can guess, we're going to be needing that in here. I'm going to head up over here, first of all. That zombie's not fooling anyone. Now it's in a state of permanent death. And we'll be riding the lift right up to the second floor. Sadly, there's no zombie um, bellboy to operate the lift for us. We just have to use it ourselves. Again, another green zombie that's absolutely no threat. And I'll be running here to get the battery for the lift in the garden. It's the one item we actually need to get on returning to the mansion. You don't have to get the ammo discs. You only really need to get them if you're wanting to get one of the better endings. But as Chris doesn't have a bazooka, instead we get overloaded with shotgun shells there. And that'll be handy. Even now we probably have more shotgun shells than necessary to finish the game. But I'll be using it pretty frivolously on the zombies here. 
except for that guy there who once again is just kind of pointless by the time he reacts to your presence you should already be into the room or well out of the room off goes red zombie's head and there's the desk to use the small key on and finally we get some more magnum ammo now that there is going to be much better than the overabundance of shotgun and handgun ammo i push aside this here little bookshelf to show the door there but uh, then i remember the only thing in it is handgun ammo and an ink ribbon as well as a view of the helipad that you've already seen and here's this diary once again if you want to read it this time around yourself just feel free to pause on the pages we'll probably have to be quick there to do it but i'll be going in here to get myself the ammo disc but i realized i hadn't left enough slots so i had to virtually waste a health spray. But hey, I don't feel so bad about that. I still have plenty of healing items. And I really don't want to have to backtrack here and waste time getting the ammo disc again. Now in the remake, this is actually where you'll get the Doom Book. And I think that makes a lot more sense that the Doom Book is held here in this here secret compartment of a library. And then the ammo disc is hidden in the study instead. It kind of makes a bit more sense. They change around a few of the item placements in uh, the director's cut. Sorry, not the remake. And um, some of the locations for the items make a bit more sense. Just the the herbicide they use on the plant, for instance, is actually hidden in the little garden area with the dogs instead of there just being an overabundance of green herbs there. Also, the gold, or the emblem rather, is hidden in the room with the night puzzle where you have to block the poisonous vents. And again, it's a shield emblem, so it kind of makes more sense for it to be hidden there. Anyway, we've taken the lift back down to the kitchen. And we're going to be using this here little back passage. But first of all, we've got to be introduced to that deadly, deadly enemy. Oh Jesus Christ, what is it? Oh, it's uh, still just a green zombie. Yeah. I really wonder why they threw a cutscene like that in. I mean, it's not like it's one of the crimson head zombies that show up in the remake. And even in the director's cut, even the zombie takes a couple of more shotgun blasts, but it's still not particularly deadly an enemy. The warrant its own little CG scene. But I guess it's kind of a nice touch. It just seems like after the hunter got its little introduction scene it's a little irrelevant well, here we go another example of me being crap at taking on hunters really badly timed shotgun blaster allowed him to get two hits in him on me although i'm still somehow on fine health after that which kind of is confusing me Anyway, we're heading back over to this direction just to use the helmet key one last time so we can get ourselves the magnum. But first of all, we've got hunter problems once again. And this here bastard gets the jump on me. As does his buddy. Yeah, that's really not so good. That was quite a few hits there. And quite a few shotgun blasts. I didn't get many two for ones. I was heading down there to get some green herbs until I remembered I was playing Chris's game and he can carry fuck all. So instead I'm going to have to go over here and hey, that's right. Chris was worried about Rebecca. Let's go check up on Rebecca. Oh no, it's a hunter. Rebecca. Fuck Rebecca, I'd better get healed up. Then I'll come out. I'll take on the hunter. Oh. 
That didn't sound so good. But maybe she's okay. She's already taken one hit. Bit more resilient than I thought she would have been. So I'll heal up. And then I'll go get that darn hunter. I'll show him what Stars Alpha members are made of. And Rebecca, well, she doesn't look good, but maybe she's just unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she's just unconscious. Rebecca! Oh, she's missing her head. Oops. Ah, well. I'd just like to thank this hunter here and give it a hero salute with a shotgun blast. Thanks for killing Rebecca for me. She was an asshole. Rebecca! Ah, just kidding. I won't actually let her die. I'll get the good ending even though I hit her. I'll just kill this hunter here first, who almost kills me, but now it's time for the cutscene. Rebecca! Chris! Thank God you're safe! I'm sorry that you were worried about me. We are in great danger. We must organize a search for the others and get the hell out of here. Understood? Yes, sir! Okay, I'll go first. Proceed with your own judgment. All right, can you do it? Yes, I can! Good luck. Yeah, can you see why I wanted to let her die? Rebecca is still really, really aggravating. Her voice just... Oh, it does unpleasant things to my ears. And like I said, that hunter near killed me as a result of having the save her. Got me down to danger health. It's time for us to go get ourselves the Magnum. Now, Rebecca can also be attacked in the little library room where you find out about uh, the different herbs over in the east side of the mansion. She'll be attacked there if you don't actually meet her in that safe room first and instead meet her with Richard. And then if you let Richard die, she will go missing for a while and not show up again until you return to the mansion and then she will be there for you. Being attacked in that there little uh, the little library room instead and well you can let her die there as well just by simply walking out of the room and it's equally hilarious in that one actually it's even more pronounced that she has been completely decapitated by the hunter but you know given how badly she played the moonlight sonata she's kind of asking for it Anyway, we got some shotgun shells as well as magnum rounds there, which is very nice. So let's get ourselves the red gem so we can get our magnum and get the hell out of this mansion. And like I said, Chris isn't going to be able to backtrack through the basement, unfortunately, due to the fact that he didn't have Barry to throw him a rope. Yep, Rebecca couldn't get Chris a rope to go down that hole with, so instead we're going to have to get into a much more dangerous situation and anyway i cut out the backtracking just to get back here there was no more hunters to deal with while i retraced my steps so putting in the red gem and oh yeah finally we have them the cold python the cold python is just lovely it's absolutely brilliant and unlike the Chill's playthrough, I'll actually show it off on more than just the Tyrant. I'll hopefully get to use it on not only the Hunters, but hopefully some zombies and dogs as well. Pretty much it's Chris's ultimate weapon. He does get one more Chris-only weapon, but 
Well, I'll be showing that later in the video, and it's not really that good. But yeah, we're gonna have to do some backtracking along the bottom floor here. I could take the upper floor as well. But I believe taking this lower route gives me one less hunter to deal with, so I'm going to be going for that. I really don't trust the hunters. They seem to get to jump on me way too much. There's no enemies in here or in the hallway, even though Barry said that this hall is dangerous. Even though it's the one safe frame in the game, really. We got some of those giant spiders here instead of the dogs. Again, they're really no problem. Just keep running and they're not going to get it caught up with you. And in this room, we've got ourselves a sneaky hunter that bolts around the corner and again gets the jump on me. I do like the effect that the blood goes onto the claws that they swipe, swipe you with and that it's not there from the get-go. But a single magnum shot will usually take a hunter out and again that's just one of the reasons why the magnum's so damn fantastic. It makes bothersome hunters a thing of the past as well as just pretty much everything else in the game. And in the director's cut version of the game you actually get the magnum really early in the room where you normally get the broken shotgun and that's pretty bloody cool. The other thing is you don't get ammo till later but it just means that you can use it on, on snake or you could even save it for your very first encounter with the hunters making them a lot lot easier to take on. Anyway it's time for this fun part of the game that was me being sarcastic once again. Yeah, it's just a matter of going back down to the garden to put in the battery, to take the lift back up, to use the crank, to take the lift back down so that you can actually enter the underground area behind the waterfall. And again, I managed to get jumped by a hunter again there. They seem to have some invincibility frames when they do their jump. I'm not sure if aiming into the air helps with that, but... If they're in the air, chances are you're already going to get hit. But I'm going to stick with this hand, or cold python here. They keep going in the call out a magnum. It's a magnum in Resident Evil 2. The cold python looks a lot cooler though, even though you can upgrade the magnum in Resident Evil 2 to have a ridiculously long barrel. But that's overcompensating. Poor Leon. Always overcompensating. Like I said, this isn't really one of the better parts of the game. It's. Don't get me wrong, it makes sense that it's blocked off until you get these items, but retracing your steps to backtrack again is just. It's not great. But it's something that would be fairly common in the series. Basically, regular areas that people would have to traverse being hidden behind really awkward puzzle items. It's like, I don't see why anybody would ever build these things for practicality reasons. It's just obnoxious. Is the dogs there? Like I said, the cult. One shot kills all for most things there and it made very short work of these dogs. You know, I probably could have just ran past them again, but I thought I had the ammo. I wanted to show off the cult a little more in this playthrough. And, you know. They say you can't keep a good dog down, but these Cerberuses are anything but good dogs. And I put them down for good. And as you see, Chris doesn't get anywhere near as much radio contact from Brad. You can get given the radio by um, Richard. But that's only if you play the regular or another route with Chris. It 
I'm not sure if it's the regular route or not, but you can actually meet Richard earlier on, and he'll still be alive with Rebecca, and you can go get him the serum, and then you'll get the radio earlier. It's still broken though, and completely pointless, and not only that, but you don't even have to answer it. You can ignore the radio. So anyway, it's time to go underground. <coughs> Again, Chris won't be meeting anybody in the underground area because even if you ask Rebecca to explore the mansion with you, she'll not be down here. Jill had Barry for backup, which was great. Chris has no such luck. Instead Chris gets a bonus item and one exclusive to his game and that is a flamethrower. And you can see it on the wall there and mistakenly I don't pick it up now. I wanted to keep room for the hexagonal crank. By the way the flamethrower you can pick it up for this series of rooms here but it will lock the door behind you unfortunately. It's got limited range, it's fairly powerful, but it doesn't have that much ammunition, and you can't reload it. It can be a bit of a crapshoot really, I don't usually bother using it. Anyway, we're going to be getting a little cutscene here, so I will once again shush. Enrico! Don't come any closer, Chris. Wait, what happened? Double crosser! Don't! <coughs> ah, ah, hell. Umbrella. Who is it? I is someone there? Double crosser? What did he mean by that? I think it's fairly obvious what he meant. It meant there was a double crosser. Well, what's he holding? Oh, just handgun bullets again. That's no good to me. And not only that, but it looks like whoever it was managed to get past the hunters. And this is something that they brought in from Code Veronica onwards, which was that the hunters seemed to be synonymous with Wesker's appearances. I don't know if he kept them as pets or something. Either way, I guess this game is sort of implying that he let the hunters in on you, but... At the same time, I always got the opinion that in the original game they were just part of the original experiments and that they were just exploring more and more of the mansion as you were too. Just looking for new things to kill. And that one manages to get a swipe in on me. And this is when I remember to pick up the flamethrower to show it off. Well, there you go. I'm just checking out my cranks to be able to differentiate them in the item box later. But I pick up the flamethrower and forgot that it locks this door on you. It turns out there's a second flamethrower later on. But I look at it here and... Let's see, it can throw flame for 9 seconds with maximum fuel. 9 whole seconds of flame. So I won't be able to use this one here. And instead I'll have to put down the flamethrower. So I can open this door. And I'll be using the next one instead. That would have saved me some magnum rounds on those hunters, but... I didn't really need to worry. So once again we got this extremely slow animation of Chris waving this here hole around the roof. Oh it's tedious. And of course you can't skip these cutscenes either so you just gotta watch Chris crank it up. Are you quite done Chris? You could have done that a bit faster I'm sure. You're supposed to be a tough guy after all. Ah, 
on, there's that flamethrower. Yeah, I'll be taking that this time. And in order to be able to get into the next room with the boss, which I believe is actually called the Black Tagger, like the name of an old Capcom arcade game. Why well, it's called a Black Tiger, but it's a spider, I don't know. But apparently that's its official name anyway. We let the old Indian Jones boulder roll pass. Now it's time to use the flamethrower. Once again he gets the jump on me. I really, really hate these guys. But the nice thing about the flamethrower there is that if you knock them onto the ground, you can just keep cooking them while they're down there. So you don't have to worry about the recovery animation. Invincibility frames. And Chris gets some handgun ammo, or sorry, not handgun ammo, uh, cold python ammo there, rather than getting some flame rounds. So that's pretty cool. Because Chris is going to need that magnum a lot. And in fact, let's show it off of this boss here. One, two, three, three bombs. Like I said, the Colt Python's just a lovely weapon. It's absolutely brilliant. It makes short work of everything. Even gigantic spiders. And I left that room so that I wouldn't fall for the tiny spiders that break free once you kill the big spider. They managed to get me a couple of times with Joe. And anyway, I fast forward this footage of me bl burning off the cobwebs here. You don't have to use the knife for Chris if you've got some flamethrower fuel left. But the thing is, the flamethrower does use up a lot of fuel. And it was a bit fidgety with the hit detection against those webs, so that's why I started to use it a little more slowly in short controlled bursts. And I put that there flamethrower down and you seen there that there was an umbrella logo. So they must have made the flamethrower. I guess they were branching out in the different territories. I may as well take that uh, first aid spray. You never get enough of those. And I managed to mess up my inventory management there and had to go in twice so I've cut both instances out and instead got what I needed which was the doom book as well as the hex crank and I kept the cold python. I didn't really need to keep the cold python I probably should have just brought the shotgun because well we've actually killed all the hunters down here and said all we've got are these useless snakes. How scary. If you hadn't brought sorry, the flamethrower through, that door would be locked. And before I start to use the hex crank there, I remember I have to trigger the boulder. So I'll let it come on. so bad and well, once again after I get the map of the underground as well as picking up this here the ammo disc then I'll be cutting down this cranking motion to one I had to use the item three times but you don't have to see me do that because it's it's terrible Good. And now it's time to get our second Doom Book in this second puzzle room. And again, you just have to push this here gargoyle statue over to the movable portion of the wall. And then use your hex crank here twice. The first time to push the gargoyle statue out. And then the second time to move the movable wall back in so that you have enough space to push it over to the pressure tile. And that's going to net us our second Doom Book. 
again I seem to have difficulty pushing that there for some reason I just seem to be sliding off it rather than pushing it like the bookshelf I used in the second video for Chris's game but again we open these doom books and get the wolf medal this time both these medals actually show up in Resident Evil 2 but in a completely different part of the city so I guess it was implying that somebody at Umbrella had a fascination with eagles of the east and wolves of the west <coughs> And again, I forgot that there wasn't really an easy opportunity to save after the underground, and I'll have to go into the laboratory for a little bit here. There's some healing herbs over there, but I'll just be putting in the medallions here. So there goes the wolf medal. And now for the gold one. I still don't know how that there lake was able to stay up there, but, well, not lake, I suppose it's more of a pond. But anyway, we'll be taking the lift down to the Umbrella Laboratory. And I'll be trying to make a beeline to the typewriter so I can get my save done. Now again, as you'll have seen, some of the puzzle solutions in my previous let's play for Jill I'll actually be cutting out the whole sequence of reading the John diary which gives us the password John, Ada and Mo for the computer I will pick up the diary so you can read it but I'll just be entering it straight into the computer as I've already explained how that puzzle works and you don't have to have read it to be able to use the computer, which is good. Uh, avoid that zombie, he wasn't going to give me any issues. That one was, and now they've hidden one around here too. Fuck him. And we've got ourselves the second demo disc. And we have an additional one in storage, so it's just a matter of getting these decoded to get into the prison. It's going to be Return of the Nude Zombies. Yeah, let's not bother with them. We'll go straight to the computer room. And like I said, we already knew the password, so that saves us from going into the other room that was unlocked in order to get the diary. And they bothered to render different hands for Chris and Jill here, which is a nice touch. Again, in sequels, it was always usually just a static image. Maybe where they would slightly change the picture once he had used an item on a computer or something like that. But it doesn't really have the charm of this here, I thought. The little umbrella computer. I really like it. There is a reference to John in Resident Evil 2 as well. In Resident Evil 2 we get to meet Ada Wong, who was his girlfriend, and it's implied that she had only really hooked up with him in order to get close to his research. What a bitch. Access denied. Well, we know the password's Mo. And Chris gives a rather cheeky gesture when he gets the right password. That's a bit rude, Chris. Again, in this here lab laboratory uh, section with Chris, the fact that you can't carry as many items, that's going to make things a bit trickier. I'll be actually aiming to dodge as many enemies as possible. Because I want to keep all my magnum ammo for the ending of the game. And I just kept the shotgun with me because I thought, hey, I've got plenty of ammo and it's mainly zombies who, well, 
we all know the zombies' weaknesses are shotguns. It sucks. So we've unlocked these doors. First of all, we're gonna head up here and get the power room key. As well as checking out the Wii projector once again. Because I still think the slides are fairly cool. Not only that, but I want to show the pictures to Chris so the penny drops and he realizes that Wesker's totally evil. So, let's check out the slides. Cerberus, the dogs. The Neptune sharks. The hunter bastards. The tyrant. I hope the note said there, try not to put the heart on the outside. And there's Al, Al Wesker over to the right. And again there's the obvious hidden panel. So we can get ourselves the power ring key. And again I'll pick up the facts here so you can have a look through it at your own leisure if you wish to. I'll not be doing the commentary on it this time. Again, we see there with all those special instructions that one of the main names was A. Wesker. So between Martin Crackhorn's diary, that, and the picture of Wesker with the other researchers, hopefully the penny will finally have dropped for Chris that Wesker's not exactly a nice guy after all. And he very probably shot on Rico. Again, we're not going to be bothering with those nude zombies. I'll let them get their freak on in their own time and space. I go in this room just to pick up the journal for your own notes if you're wanting to read it. It's probably my favourite journal next to the Itchy and Tasty Steve journal. And all we've got in there is a clip, a healing herb, and we're not really going to be needing any of those. I'm surprised they're still giving you handgun ammo at this stage. You really shouldn't be using the handgun by now if you are, then you must have been doing something wrong. Oh, need zombie time. Down goes one. Ah, down goes another two. Gotta love the spread effect. And here's the facts for you to read through as well, if you want to. Now Chris knows that stars have been set up. Thank you by the last nude zombie, and time to get our first passcode from the ammo disk. And we've got our little biblical coat here again. And now I'll be able to proceed through to the room where I can save my game finally. Again, you need three passcodes for that there door. And even then, you'll not actually be able to open it until the triggering system's been activated. Got a nude zombie here. Again, nice head pop there. And we've used our lab key here. I thought it was the power room key for some reason. The power room is an important place to go. And we've got three more zombies here. So we'll be taking those guys out. May as well. Got shotgun ammo to burn, so why not? And that will be the end of part 3 of this Let's Play of Resident Evil with Chris. And next time I will be exploring the, exploring rather, the remainders of the laboratory. And we'll see the exciting conclusion of Chris's game.
Got ourselves some magnum ammo there. Get both ammo discs at the ready. Anyway, hopefully you'll join me next time for the final part of Let's Play Resident Evil. Chris's game, and I've been Megatron Bison. Thank you very much for watching.